Okay, so today we're going to titrate hydrochloric acid using sodium hydroxide as a base. Now, first thing we're going to need is hydrochloric acid, which can be bought at your local hardware store in the paint section under the name muriatic acid. Now, this stuff is extremely toxic and poisonous. Do not use this unless you know the exact safety procedures required. Uh, I don't want to see anyone get hurt using this stuff. It's very, very nasty stuff. We're also going to need sodium hydroxide, which is a corrosive base that cannot be handled without gloves and proper safety equipment. So make sure that you know what you're doing when you're handling this. And if not, do not do the experiment. The last thing that we're going to need is a, a couple of drops of phenolphthalein solution. And we're going to use this as our pH indicator. Now, phenolphthalein is clear in an acid and it turns bright pink in a base. So let's get started then. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to weigh out exactly 5 grams of sodium hydroxide pellets. Now make sure it's exactly 5 grams, no more, no less. Weigh it out as best you can. Then we're going to transfer it to what's called a volumetric flask. And the purpose of doing this is two things. It allows us to add water when we're going to dissolve this incrementally and to know exactly after we dissolve the sodium hydroxide pellets in water how much we have to dilute it to to get exactly 100 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution. Uh, so basically, uh, just transfer all of the sodium hydroxide pellets into this volumetric flask here. And if you don't have a volumetric flask, um, you can just dilute it with 100 milliliters of water. It'll be a little less uh, accurate, the concentration, but it'll still work for our purposes. So once you've transferred it completely to the volumetric flask, add just enough water to completely cover the sodium hydroxide pellets and the purpose were and the purpose of adding water in incremental amounts is so that the sodium hydroxide can dissolve fully which is going to release a lot of heat so we can't just pour a bunch of water in there just pour enough to dissolve the pellets and just when the water's in there just start shaking it um, swirling it so that it the sodium hydroxide pellets dissolve now, this is very important because if you have undissolved solute which is our sodium hydroxide um, then the solvent isn't going to be I'm sorry the solution isn't going to be the right concentration the way we're diluting this is going to give us what we call in chemistry exactly 0.125 molar solution of sodium hydroxide now what you have to do after it's dissolved is dilute it to that mark I just showed you and then um, fill it all the way up with water and once you have it to that mark you know that you have exactly 100 milliliters of 0.125 molar sodium hydroxide solution. Put that aside and better or better yet pour that into a a uh, graduated cylinder. After that you're going to get your muriatic or hydrochloric acid and you're going to pour that uh, about halfway into a 25 milliliter beaker. Uh, now remember this is very nasty stuff um, which can lead to uh, burns, third degree burns and even respiratory problems and even death. So once again, be extremely careful when handling hydrochloric acid. It's very nasty stuff. And, uh, you know, just, just be extremely careful. I don't want to see anybody get hurt using this stuff. You're going to then take a 100 milliliter beaker, I'm sorry, a beaker filled with 100 milliliters of water, and you're going to drop exactly one milliliter of hydrochloric acid into uh, that those hundred milliliters of water now my dropper has a one milliliter mark so I knew exactly how much to drop in there um, as soon as you get that that hydrochloric acid in there you're just gonna give it a good stir so that it mixes and just make sure you stir it thoroughly you're going to uh, put it on a magnetic stir as I'm showing here and basically what a magnetic stirrer does is it has a magnetic pill that it moves in the uh, liquid which which uh, provides stirring when you're not able to stir it yourself we're then going to add our two drops of phenolphthalein solution and this is going to be our pH indicator and if you've seen my other videos on pH indicator you know that it'll switch colors uh, whether it's in an acid or in a, in a base. Now phenolphthalein stays clear in an acid but turns a bright pink in a base. So once we add the phenolphthalein drops we turn on the magnetic stirrer so that everything mixes um, and as soon as we do that 
we're going to then take the sodium hydroxide 0.125 molar solution that we, we uh, made earlier and we're going to pour some into a beaker and that's what we're going to use to titrate this. And by titrating, I mean basically the, we're going to use the sodium hydroxide to neutralize the hydrochloric acid, causing the color change. And remember that after you pour it into the beaker and titrate this, pour the excess back into the graduated cylinder so you know exactly what volume you used. Now, here, we're going to uh, start adding the sodium hydroxide, and you're going to see a color change right about there, but it's going to disappear. You can see it's turning a little pink there. It's going to disappear because the neutralization reaction hasn't completely occurred. You're going to see that again here. You see it turned pink, but it disappeared. But now it lasted a little longer, which means we're closer to the neutralization. Right now it's one, two, three drops, and there you go. It turned completely pink, and that's exactly when the neutralization occurred. So if I measure how much volume I use, I know exactly the concentration of hydrochloric acid that was titrated. Now I'm going to show you that again and just to recap exactly what we did um, as, as, as you probably know by now we just took a base which is sodium hydroxide dissolved that in water to make a solution of sodium hydroxide and we also added uh, hydrochloric acid to a water solution and we combined the two to, to make a neutralization reaction. Now basically what happens when you can combine sodium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid is what happens in any uh, acid-based neutralization reaction where you get uh, a salt, which in this case is um, sodium chloride, which is just ordinary table salt, and you get uh, water. So that, that's, that's basically the products of this chemical reaction here. It's just regular table salt and water. Um, but when that neutralization reaction is taking place, if you add an indicator, um, you, can, you can find out exactly how much volume of your base it took to neutralize that acid. And remember, you already know the concentration of the, uh, of the base you're using, the sodium hydroxide solution. Uh, you know that you added 5 grams of it to 100 milliliters of water, giving you, uh, if you do the calculations, and if, people, if, if enough people request it, I'll make the video... I'll make a video doing all the calculations and showing you how to do so. Um, but 5 grams of sodium hydroxide into 100 milliliters of water gives you a 0.125 molar sodium hydroxide solution, which is just another way that we measure these things. Um, basically, what you would have to do is you would convert from grams to another unit called moles, and then you would divide the moles used of sodium hydroxide um, you would divide that by the uh, volume of water you diluted it into. When, when you know that concentration, when you do moles divided by liters, you'll be able to know the concentration and you'll be able to convert that concentration to uh, how much hydrochloric acid uh, you would have to use, which would then tell you the exact concentration of hydrochloric acid. And this is how chemists... Um, this is the process by which chemists determine the concentration of a solution that is unknown by titrating it with a solution of a known concentration of, of base or acid or what have you. And um, that way you can calculate mathematically exactly how much it took to neutralize it and therefore you'll be able to know the concentration. So if you guys want to see the math, um, you know, if enough people want to see the math and all that kind of stuff, and how you do this mathematically, I'd be happy to show it to you, but I just need, you know, enough people. I'm not going to do it if maybe one or two people uh, want to see exactly the, the process used to um, decipher this. But, you know, if you want to see it, just let me know, and hopefully you guys enjoy this. I'll have more to come.